floods in Pakistan continue to devastate millions of lives. Many people here are waiting anxiously to hear from family and friends. Tonight, the Disasters Emergency Committee launches its official appeal. But in Luton, many sections of the community have already got the fundraising underway. As Neil Bradford now reports. It's been an anxious few days for Wazir Khan. His daughter and granddaughter narrowly escaped the rising flood water. He's been keeping a close eye on events from his home in Luton. Uh, all your family members now, are they all safe? They're all, all safe now at the moment, yeah. They're all, because they came, the, some of them has to come by helicopter, you know, before, and the other came by, I don't know how they managed to come, but they're all safe now at, at the moment, yeah. They were staying in the Maden area of Pakistan, one of the worst affected areas. So far, the disaster has already claimed the lives of more than 1,600 people and affected over 4 million. The river was... Um coming um, higher and higher up to our house. Half the family managed to get out safely, but I, I and some other people, members of the family, got stuck behind. So I had to go out through the roof. And that was with my uh, five-month-old daughter. She was with me. And luckily, thanks to the Pakistani army, I got out in time. The president of the town's Pakistani Muslim Association says there are many more families in Luton anxious for news. There are about 25,000 people live in Luton and I'm sure there are many people whose families are being affected back home in Pakistan and uh, it's a matter of finding out who are uh, affected more and, and, and the information is coming slowly how much effect has been caused to various communities in various parts of the country. Tonight the Disasters Emergency Committee launches its official appeal. But in Luton, fundraising has already begun by all sections of the community. Do have that plan in terms of how we're going to raise that money, like through yes, our mosque. Yeah. Luton's Bangladeshi Helping Hands charity is just one of many local organisations raising funds. We believe that any disaster victim, whoever that person is, whether um, that person is Muslim, Hindu, Christian, Buddhist, doesn't matter. We, if we can help them, we'll help those people. Despite now knowing his daughter is safe, Wazir phones her every day. He knows he's lucky. There are many more families who can't say the same. Neil Bradford, Anglia News, Luton. Right, it's ten minutes past six. Do stay with us. More news from your part. The jury in the case of a Norwich businessman accused of a double murder heard today that one of his victims had admitted to being afraid of him. John Moody is standing trial for the murder of his ex-partner, Karen Brown, and her boyfriend, Ken Snell. Kate Prout reports. Stephen Wilkie leaving court today after telling the jury Karen Brown admitted she was afraid of John Moody and that he was still trying to control her. Karen and her partner, Ken Snell, had been at a New Year's Eve party in 2008 when she made the admission. She had already ended her 12-year relationship with John Moody because of his violence, but they still ran a business together, Baguette Express in Norwich. Today the jury heard from friends of both John Moody and Ken Snell and Karen Brown. One in particular, Nicola Fisher, said she had met John Moody on the night of the killings at the Norwich Beer Festival. They had discussed the breakup of both of their relationships and she says she let slip to John Moody that she had bumped into Karen Brown at a different beer festival and that she had been with a male friend. She went on to say he became more focused and wanted to know who her friend was. Moody then went to the home of Ken Snell in Cringleford, where he killed both him and Karen Brown in a sustained and ferocious hammer and knife attack. Moody denies murder on the grounds of diminished responsibility. The case continues. Kate Prout, Angley News, Norwich. A 24-hour strike by bus drivers in North Essex has been averted. Drivers working for the first bus company in Colchester, Clacton, Harwich, Braintree and Chelmsford were due to walk out on Monday. The dispute was over the terms of a pay agreement reached after a series of strikes in the run-up to Christmas last year. But union representatives say they've suspended the action after talks with the company last night. Now, it may look idyllic, but the number of offences involving punting in Cambridge has doubled. New figures show disputes between punt touts and river users rose from 27 in 2007 to 54 last year. Two punts were attacked with an electric saw, causing £10,000 worth of damage. The council says it's working closely with boat operators to reduce the problem. 
24 villages around Sizewell Nuclear Power Station in Suffolk are asking for more than £10 million in compensation if a new plant is built. The parishes, which include Leyston, Saxmundham and Middleton, want energy companies and suppliers to put up the money. Laura Burns has more. This farm shop in Middleton is at the heart of village life. But it's also next to a busy road, which looks set to get even busier. I think if you talk to anyone uh, on this road and uh, the main road from Yoxford to Leyston, uh, who was there during the construction of the B station, then um, they're well aware of the disruption and the uh, increase in traffic and the general uh, loss of quality of life that it can cause. Traffic is just one concern for those who live near Sizewell, which is why the Sizewell Parish's liaison group has formed, asking for a £10 million investment and annual payments for seven years. We hope joining together and talking about it, we can assess what uh, the needs of the communities are. So are you saying that the group accepts the plans as long as you get money in return? Ah, oh, that sounds naughty. We're not, we have no issue with nuclear development at all. All we are saying is that the communities in these rural areas are going to be affected. And we need to be able to cope with the way it's affected in a proper manner. Now Middleton is one of 24 town and parish councils that have formed the liaison group. Their aim is to get the best for the communities should nuclear expansion take place. The model is based on Sellafield up in Cumbria, where the communities there have been successful. EGF Energy said, We are currently consulting with the communities around the Hinkley Point seaside in Somerset where our proposals are at a more advanced stage. It is very early days in the Sizewell project. We would, however, expect to see similar benefits for Sizewell C, should it go ahead. The group maintain they are neither pro nor anti-nuclear power. They're simply saying if Sizewell C does secure a future, they want to safeguard theirs as well. Laura Burns and Leah News, Middleton in Suffolk. An historic document which brought democracy to the people of Malden in Essex has been bought for display in the town. The charter dates back to 1763 when the MP at the time was accused of threatening the people of Malden to vote for him. The Friends of the Moot Hall used money from the Mayor's Fund to buy the copy of the charter to mark the 200th anniversary of its production. This document means 200 years of uh, restored constitutional heritage housed here in its original building, a building that dates from the 15th century and is well worth a visit. A rare butterfly which can only be found in our region is making a comeback after a century in decline. The swallowtail is Britain's largest butterfly and was once commonplace across the whole of Britain. Now its distinctive yellow and black markings can only be found in the Norfolk Broads and at Wickham Fen in Cambridgeshire. Its comeback is down to better land management, which has boosted the growth of its favourite food, the milk parsley. Now a new world record's been set in Norwich. See if you can guess what it is. Uh, OK, I'll tell you. It's over 5,000 guides, scouts and helpers gathered in Norfolk from all over the world. It's all part of the Norjam Jamboree. They actually skipped non-stop for over two minutes, and that was enough to set a new record, and a colourful one at that as well.